You're listening to Turi Writer's She Said What podcast. I'm Turi, along with Marcy Persky. In this installment, what would you do if the little free library near your house were suddenly being used as a combination recycling bin and missionary outpost? My hair looks like something about Mary. (laughs) Standing. (laughs) My my hair, yeah, same. I got out of the shower. I haven't felt this unput together since I was a brand new mom. That's your, you're like a one arm machine now. There's... A one arm slot machine. <laughs> it's and bad. You want to spit out any coins? In your, okay with me. your direction? <laughs> yep. I'd have to put in a new password to get those two. <laughs> There's a concentrated effort right now to get me to upgrade to some new software that I would have to pay hundreds of dollars for. I am resisting for lots and lots of reasons, including my new completely wingbat theory that if I don't upgrade, I will be less interesting to people who want to do bad things. I don't think it goes that way. I think that they'll be more after you. You think? Because they're going to say, this dummy doesn't know how to upgrade. She's totally going to fall for Steve in India. (laughs) Good old Steve in India. Well, I am definitely doing more wing bat things than I ever did before. <laughs> For example, I think I mentioned the little free library and that it got me through COVID and that I love yeah. it. But somebody's decided it's just kind of a way to get rid of their old crap. Like they have a bag full of <laughs> 99 cent store birthday party stuff and they stick that in there and they don't have to pay for garbage pickup. <laughs> yeah, they've got everything but their recycled tuna cans that they're putting in there. However, I have taken it upon myself to become the informal anti-morality police. That's what I am now. I am the anti-morality. Yes. What are you putting porn in there? What are you doing? Somebody has been putting these really how to attend to your ministry, how in my darkest hour I found faith, all this religious press stuff from a very, very doctrinaire ministry um I'm, I'm are they the ones that knock on my door early in the morning no that's different I... either this is people hoping we pick up these books and fall in love with their faith or they're people who've lost their faith and are trying to get rid of all the books they spent all their money on for yeah. years and years and years i think it's b you think they these are people who've lost their faith yeah at least in whatever those books are saying yeah because otherwise they would treasure those books and clutch them to their bosom and never let them go, is what you're saying? they pass them on to their children and their pets, their goldfish. Well, the first batch, which I looked at the back cover, these are not cheap. They're like 15 20 bucks a book, and this was easily $200 worth of books I brought over to an evangelical church nearby because I felt guilty throwing out anybody's books. But the tide just kept rolling in of... And, you know, you feel guilty throwing out people's religious tracts. But frankly, frankly, I don't think if you want to put your crappy romance novels up there, fine, or your cheesy mysteries up there, fine, or your or your science fiction written by a guy I happen to know is a foot fetishist. But fine, put that all in there. I don't care. Kids books, craft books, recipe books. I've got no judgment about any of that stuff except privately. Religion and and politics do not belong in little libraries. I wonder how I'd feel about porn. I might, I might, I don't know. If somebody started putting like really hardcore porn, I think. Oh, you'd take it home. I would, (laughs) (laughs) but for the best of reasons. Speaking of porn, did you, did you see this? This is why I want to just take all of my computers and chuck them out the window. The window, the window, we throw them out the window. Some group and we're back to religion again different church some group in colorado raised a bunch of money to buy the data of people who are using porn sites and gay chat rooms and they've traced them all to religious leaders in their denomination and they're ratting them all out to the hierarchy of their denomination isn't it hypocritical to be a leader in a denomination denouncing something that you're actually doing? 
Well, yes, it is. But one could assume that some of these religious leaders are just quietly trying to live their lives hiding in their particular denomination and they're not spilling hatred and 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 violence and you know maybe maybe they just oh, I'm not I'm not sticking up I'm just asking a question. I mean that's a huge huge concern of mine yeah. not that I do Look, not that I doing anything illegal or amiss. Okay, but let's just say I am the leader of the Church of Tory, okay? Okay. This is probably the safest way to talk about this. I'm the leader. <laughs> I am the spiritual guide of the Church of Turi. That's my new job. And the Church of Turi thinks that anyone who is gay or trans is going to roast eternally in the fiery pits of hell. I said, okay. I said that so convincingly. You'd you almost, did say that. You'd almost think I believed it, wouldn't you? So... <laughs> But I don't. Anyway, you but sound let's, like RuPaul. let's say that I do. Do I sound like RuPaul? Hello. When you when you do that, the whole <laughs> the fiery bits of hell. So okay, yeah. let's just say I believe that, uh, and and quietly believe it. That's one thing. Now let's say that I make a public statement and promulgate this on websites and teach it to families and impress it upon children. But see. Secretly, secretly, I go on same-sex hookup chat rooms, and I want to date people of my same gender, and I want to have all kinds of procedures that are publicly decried by the Church of Turi. Then I'm fair game. Then I'm totally, that's the, that's the totally, u- ultimate totally, of hypocrisy. totally fair game. Yes, but yes. let's just and that and then you should rat me out. However, let's just say in the Church of Turi. There's somebody who believes a lot of the other tenets, you know, kindness to animals. Church of Turi builds housing for unhoused. Church of Turi has food pantries. Church of Turi does lots and lots of other things. And so somebody yes. joins the Church of Turi who happens to be engaged in these in these same gender preference behaviors, but they're just quietly doing it. They never say a word to anybody about whether they approve or disapprove. They just join the Church of Turi and do the best they can and don't talk with anybody about their penchant for doing things that I publicly declared are going to send them straight to us in the fiery pit of hell. <laughs> are those people entitled to some privacy? Because I would say yes. 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 I agree, yes. Okay. Those people are but yes. because it is the Church of Turi. Yes. So the, Turi has to walk a fine line. I do, yes. And never step over it or go to the depths of hell. That's right. I love it that you love saying that as much as I do. So, <laughs> so the thing is, this group of people who belong to the Church of Turi have gone about collecting the chat information of all of my followers who may or may not be proselytizing that you're going to go to hell if you like to sleep with people who have the same body equipment that you do. But they're ratting everybody out. Everybody out. And that is, and that's so disturbing. I can't even tell you. That's why I don't, the only thing I chat about is like goat health and (laughs) what, and, and why is my bulldog wheezing kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, everything that, I will speak to someone about online is very benign. Yes. Just dump the church. But they love the Church of Turi. They're rooted in the Church of Turi. But all these guys that used to be on late night TV yeah. and then were busted one by one, you know, for fraudulently taking money, for having girlfriends on the side. Or boyfriends on the side. This. Yeah. Yeah. And people still followed them. Well, it is amazing. And it's kind of the same kind of the same deal i mean you can't quit your church even though it takes away all the fun of everything that you consider fun in life i forget who wrote a book but somebody wrote a pretty interesting book about life within we'll just call it the church of tory and um and and the person sequestered themselves among the priests of the church of tory and there was somebody who had been gone and come back and clearly preferred people of his same gender Mm -hmm. and they figured out that what he had done when he left was try out that life and that it it didn't jibe with his he had moral conflict about it so he just came back to the church of Turi and decided to do nothing about his orientation at all and so that's one thing 
two people try it. They've been taught that it's wrong and they can't get rid of it. So they just jettison their whole sexuality. And if you can do that and that works for you, well, all right then. But here was another thing. I have a friend who believes in, in fostering good relations between another religious organization and what we're calling the Church of Turi. Okay. And I have met uh, young men who are on the path to joining the Church of Turi, and they are about as gay as, I mean, Richard Simmons. <laughs> Richard Simmons looks like Clint Eastwood next to some of these guys <laughs> yeah. that, that I'm okay. meeting. My kids, when we left one of these dinners, said, you know, a couple of those guys seemed, seemed like they were pretty pretty same-sex oriented to me. <laughs> and I said, well, good for you. You have gaydar at the age of 12. Good. That's nice. Yeah. I just want to add in here, I have no gaydar whatsoever. <laughs> I'm like the worst. Well, I mean, we each have have close relatives who are... who are. Yes, we do. Yes. I, I had no gaydar with my own kids. <laughs> You know, I'm just like, I'm clueless, I guess, because I really don't care. It doesn't matter to me. I was but I'm always surprised clear. when someone comes out of the closet that's like really famous. And I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> Even though he's wearing high heels when he does it. I'm just like, <laughs> I am clueless. Well, so I, I sat through a couple of these dinners and I just I started to feel kind of sad because all I really wanted to ask these young men who are about to join the Church of Turi, where they're going to roast in hell if they are true to themselves. I just wanted to say, sweetheart, do you know what you're about to do to your life and everything about your sex drive? Do, do you understand that you either have to surrender it or hide in virtual or literal shrubbery for the rest of your life? And you can't say that at a dinner of conviviality and bridge building between the Church of Turi and this other organization. It's not allowed. So I just. Well, as the Church of Turi, though, what you would do with these guys is when you do whatever is the equivalent to baptism, where they take a new name and they soak them in the water or whatever that thing is, yeah. um, you would give them each a shrubbery name. <laughs> <laughs> that might be that might be a gentle way of dropping a hint. Like I pronounce you mulberry. <laughs> yeah, pronounce I can't think of a lot of bushes right now. Lilacs. But yes, maybe if you named them all after shrubbery, they you would think get, they the, would get the hint? Yeah, pretty strong hint. To oh me. my gosh. In the Bay Area where we used to live, there were famous shrubberies where people would go with wedding rings on. Uh, yeah. to meet up with people who clearly were not part of their marriage. The um, equivalent of rest areas in the Midwest. The preschool where our kids went was near Golden Gate Park, famous Golden Gate Park, which is a yeah. vast park. And the closest open, sunny, pleasant, grassy area to bring the picnic lunch after preschool was the Rose Garden. It was very lovely. But the Rose Garden also had bathroom facilities which about the second day that I was having a picnic with the kids, um, the kids were still in diapers, but I noticed a lot of heavy traffic going into the men's room of the bathroom at the road. <laughs> heavy, like like if they had all ingested pounds and pounds of x lax. But the spousal unit took them to this picnic spot and remarked to me that it was so convenient. There was a bathroom right there. And I hit the flipping roof. <laughs> well, see, I said, "What? What? You took them in? What? Like, why don't you just take them to to to, to a bus station bathroom while you're? What? What are you doing? I lost my, my husband would take them behind a tree. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I said, you, you know, pick a rose bush, thorns and all. It's safer than that. Yeah. Where were we with the Church of Turi? All I'm saying, <laughs> shrubbery. <laughs> Saying, shrubbery has played a large part in my in my sympathy for people who are not allowed to be themselves. I have watched people go into shrubbery in Berkeley. I've watched them use the shrubbery or the the public restrooms in Golden Gate Park. And you want to take these young men aside and say, truly, you're going to live a life in public men's rooms and shrubbery if you don't just get clear about who you are, and and. The Church of Turi will be praying for you, <laughs> and and we will stuff a bunch of tracts into the local little free library. library. 
on your behalf. And that's what I have to say about that. Assuming you've come this far because you enjoy the podcast, may we recommend my book, She Said What? A Life on the Air. It's available at your neighborhood bookstore or on Amazon. And if you're feeling especially generous, please leave the podcast a good review. Thanks.